Howdy YouTube, welcome to another episode of the Gunman. So today we've got a full respray on a Nissan Patrol. I'll give you guys a look at the clear coat that we're using. So that's the PPG LBC 105 triple five hardener. And today I'm using the 540 thinners. So I was doing a few trials with the 520, 30, which is there behind there and 540. So as it turns out, I was having some issues with the 530 thinners, but um, after some trials, it turns out I was only having the issues with the um, 540 and 520 thinners, but only on those Mazdas. So that's good news. I was, um, yeah, thinking that it was gonna be across the board with the thinner, but it was only um, with the 530 thinner, uh, sorry, with the 525, 540 over the top of the Soul Red Crystal. So there must be something about that Sprint Clear or the candy that it doesn't like. So that's good news. So I'm at, and the reason I say that is because here in Australia they have um, recently discontinued the um, 530 thinners. So um, I might have to stock up on a couple of cans just to use on those Mazdas, but um, not to worry. I decided to use this gun here because I haven't used, well, I've used it once or twice last week. I'm back using it again. It, was, it, it got to the point where it was a little bit annoying because um, with this, They've got this annoying little swivel on the base of the gun, but as you can see there, I just got a, um, a hose clamp, tighten it up, and it's locked that swivel in. So that's all good. The reason I need a gauge on these guns is this uh, 105 clear is very application sensitive. If you put too much on, you're just gonna get runs all through your, well, you can get really big ones if you're not careful, but even just around those door handles. And I actually never use this 105 clear on a bumper. So if I, so for instance, I'll do those um, Soul Red Crystal Mazdas. Um, when I do the bumpers, I'll use the 136 clear. I'll, de I'll definitely use a different clear, but yeah, I've found on flat panels and you, you're usually okay. Like the 105 will give you like a bit of a flatter finish. It flows out a little bit more. Um, and it does have, yeah, the high gloss. So that, yeah, definitely got a nice high gloss retention out of this clear. Um, anyone who's familiar with any waterborne paints will know that it can be a little bit, um, yeah, susceptible to a bit of dieback or pinchback. But anyway, I've been talking a little bit too much. Let's get in there and paint some shit. So we'll get this on there. Um, so this here is a 1.3 SATA CC. I believe these only come out in the one um, tip. But yeah, I just spray it full fan, uh, full fluid, and you'll see what I do with the pressure. But I actually change the pressure. So I go about 38 to 40 PSI on my first coat, and second coat is around, um, yeah, 30 PSI or two bar. Um, anyway, let's go. Yeah, I'll get you on that head mount. And where is, there it is. I just did a recent video um, on these two bonnets on this channel and that's what, uh, that was pretty popular so I thought I'd do another one in a similar vein which is kind of live if you know what I mean it's a little bit easier for me to do the, than well it's a bit easier than me going home putting the video into the editor and doing the narration or the voiceover but here we go so this is the job that we've got it's a Nissan Patrol full respray I've already done the roof I like to do the roof separately I have tried doing them at the same time, but you just end up getting, uh, yeah, trying to lean over a quarter panel on a, when you're up there on your, on your stands is just, um, it's not ideal. But yeah, so um, one thing I was mentioning in my last video is that I found that you had to go one coat and then straight away with your second, but it turns out I don't really think I have to do that anymore. Um, it, it was a solution to well, it wasn't the right solution. I thought that it was, but yeah, it was just the fact that I wasn't going over Soul Red Crystal. That was the that was the problem. Yeah, there we go, got our um, air-fed respirator on, pretty important specifically when you're spraying the clear coat because as you'll see in a few minutes we're going to have some big clouds of overspray. I did have to stop like, I got a couple of silicon spots through there and through that guard but yeah, I made the executive decision just that stop and um, and and bake it out, sand it out, put some more base coat on. So 
So yeah, this gun here, it's a little bit restricted. If you're used to, say, a ProLite or most 1.3, you may be a little bit surprised that this gun is a little bit slow. But, that's perfect for the clear that I'm using. So, I just want to make that clear. If you see the finishes that I get, and you look at this gun, now, whilst it, they call it a 1.3, it behaves like a 1.2, which is really confusing. Like, come on, Fada. Back in the day, all your guns were, um, 1.3 would behave like a primer gun, and it's like you're going the other way. So, I guess it, my point is, it's a little bit confusing for people who just think 1.3 would mean 1.3. I, I don't really understand it. It's like they've overcorrected. It's like just make 1.3 1.3 again come on <laughs> now 1.3 is closer to a 1.2 previously 1.3 was closer to a 1.4 so yeah the, the idea of the high pressure on the first coat is to not overload the material to get a nice thin like skinny skinny first coat right um and then I, do, I like to do that for a couple of reasons. So yeah, <coughs> you're not overloading the material. It's also going to help um, orange peel. So it's going to give you a finer, a flatter finish because you haven't put excessive material on. And also the thinner coat is more likely to get a little bit of flash off the clean coat. So yeah, that's about it. Because the way that this clear dries, it doesn't want to dry it like... Generally, it, it, it needs the heat generally to dry, or else it'll just stay wet forever. Um, well, but when it dries, but once it dries, it's like bang, it's hard as a rock. Once it goes, it goes. Anyway, so that's my first coat, and again, I don't want to leave it too long. But yeah, I, I have been leaving it Going back to what I used to, the way that I used to spray it, is how I used to spray it. Put a coat on, I'll put this first thin coat on. No, no um, actual flash time, like you're not, the only time you're waiting is the time it takes to get around the job. If that makes sense. Like I'm not actually setting a timer for five minutes and waiting for five minutes in between coats. It's just, yeah. But even I can see that this put the second coat, I have got a little bit of flat between first and second. Again, that's because I went so skinny and so thin on that first coat. But like I say, now I'm turning that pressure down to say 30 psi or 2 bar. I'm going to be getting that little bit more material on. And because the first coat was so skinny, I've got a nice thin layer underneath. So I'm not going to have excessive orange peel. So yeah, this one is a three layer pearl, this car here, so... By the time I put three different primers on, because they have to go X primer, and they've got a specific procedure that you have to follow um, when you're painting these, because... Yeah, we've just got to follow spec. Just so that we're covering our ass. So that we're making sure that everything's been done right. And um, yeah, so by the time I got three coats of or three separate primers on, so I went edge primer 219. So 219 is a generally a sandable primer, but for these for these patrols, it's the only way that TPG says you're allowed to do it. They say, if you want this work, you have to spray them this way. Or else, if you don't do it that, then well, you're not going to have any warranty. So we have to spray them like that. And then, over the top of that 219, I use 201, which is a white primer, just as a bit of a, just for coverage, right? So yeah, it's not for any other reason than to help the white cover. Because, like I was saying before, um, 
Yeah, Waterborne paint is pretty well known for a bit of dieback and pullback, even at the best of times, but especially when you're doing a three layer pearl. So I would rather put that extra coat of white primer down than, and so I go white primer, right? So I go the three primers, white primer being the last one, and then, um, and then only two coats of white base coat because I've already got the white primer. So that's, that's allowing me to, um, yeah, have minimal base coat on, which is, the base coat's the part which will pull the gloss out of your clear coat. So less of it, the better. But in saying that, I still have to do two coats of the white and then two coats of the, the pearl. So you've still got four coats of base coat on. Again, not ideal, but we're keeping it to a minimum. Um, another thing I like to do is go 30% on my pearl, 30% reducer in the base coat on my pearls. Generally, I do 25%. I find that a, a good rule, um, rule of thumb to follow, 25% with EnviroBase. Generally hits the sweet spot for drying, coverage, you know, it's just the, the, the best balance I have now. Um, Yeah, that's about it. Next thing, we just get in there and do it. But yeah, there's been a lot of trial and error for me to get to the point that I'm at with environment. But a lot of it's just I have you got to do the the trial and error yourself. Unfortunately, that's just how it is. I reckon there's a few positives to EnviroBase, you know, don't get me wrong, I'm not like a hater of PPG, but there's definitely some, some downsides to it. Like the colours with PPG, what I've found, right, is that they will always have a variant that's close, or pretty damn good. But I just don't like their colour tool. Like, it's, they don't make it easy to find that variant. I had one the other day, um, one of those Isuzu's, right? You get the, the spectro, you take a photo of it, so there's no colour tips, okay, whatever. Then you're relying on your spectro, like how do I know which is the best variant, right? First one, like you would, the first one's meant to be the best one, right? Second one, second best, third, third best, right? I tried the first one, terrible, terrible. Second one, shit out. Tried the third one, which should be the worst, but it's perfect, it's each edge, like, it should, yeah, my point is, I shouldn't have to mix up three colours to find the right variant. Um, with other paint systems, you do not have to, but yeah, like I say, you know, it is what it is, like, I don't even care about it, I'm just, I'm just telling you how it is, guys. <laughs> I know there's some people that get all defensive as soon as I say the truth, or the, the truth as how I see it. But you know, at the end of the day, mate, it's just paint. If, if you're going and getting all butt hurt from someone's opinion on paint, like, come on, man, <laughs> grow up. <laughs> anyway, let's do this thought. So this is what I was saying. This is why I like to have that regulator. I can get consistent results across, um, yeah, different panels. You know, before I did the body first. Oh, did I forget to pop that? Yep. You can tell I'm a, I'm a, um, a PPS user usually. Usually I use the PPS too. I actually recently went back to PPS for even for base coat. So, so for a while I was using the these cups for, for base coat as well, but the PPS have now got again it's probably something that's been around in the States for ages, but here in Australia it's only well in the last year or so We've got the um, 125, oh sorry, 80 micron um, lid with an 80 micron strain out. Um, and yeah, specifically for EnviroBase, which is a bit gritty, like it's got lots of clumps and lumps of crap in it. But yeah, having the, the smaller the smaller micron in the filter definitely helps. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, it's been a big day on this one. It's been a big day. Um, 
But isn't that a beautiful looking gun? Spray gun dress again, thank you for sending it out. If you want one, just like I say, it does operate more like a 1.2. So just keep that in mind. If you prefer a faster gun that throws out lots of material, you're probably best off going with a different gun, maybe the Sata X or something like that. Um, but yeah, if you want a well, if you want a gun that does this, buy this one. 
But yeah, spraygunthreats.co.uk. Thanks again for sponsoring the channel. Really appreciate it. Now we'll have a quick close-up look at the car, and we shall call that a video. That's sort of a nice tight finish. It will pull back a little bit, I know that. Like, I mean, I've been doing this for long enough. Um, and in saying that, I did actually bake it for 20 minutes before I cleared it, just to sort of help the dry back a little bit. And like I say, the 30% reducer does help too. But it's looking nice and straight. We didn't seem to miss any dents or anything. Oh, actually, I did see one up here on the pillar. We may have to get that PDR, we'll, um, but we'll see. I don't know if you can even catch that one up there, but there you go guys. Hopefully you've all been well. Next step, I will bake it. Even if it's the last job of the day, I still do like to bake it, even if it's just say 20 minutes, but... Anyway guys, see you in the next one. Government out. Get out there and paint some shit. Woo!